So in this video, we're going to take what we learned about enthalpy diagrams, and we're going to use that information to work with um, real chemical equations. So we're going to actually build thermochemical equations from information that's given to us in problems. And the first thing that we have to understand with thermochemical equations is, is what is a thermochemical equation? So a thermochemical equation is basically a chemical reaction and all of the things that we learned about how to write chemical reactions in chapter two, um, they have to be balanced, they have to have phase labels, the compounds have to have their proper nomenclature and all that stuff, that all is true here. The only thing that we're adding now is that we're adding the delta H to it. So for example, a proper thermochemical reaction, 2H2 plus O2 goes to uh, 2H2O gas. So this is a proper chemical reaction. We have the H2 gas, the O2 gas, and the H2O gas. And like I showed you in the previous video, we can now add delta H is equal to minus 483.6 kilojoules to this. So this part tells us several things. This part tells us that energy is being lost. It tells us that our products are, uh, that our products are lower in energy or in enthalpy than our reactants. So that is what this is telling us. And we can kind of interpret this as, um, we can interpret this as being related to the stoichiometry. So if we remember, this, uh, this enthalpy is extensive. So this is going to be related to, so the enthalpy is related to the coefficients. So what this is actually telling you is that for every two moles of H2 that are consumed, I'm going to get out 483.6 kilojoules. I'm gonna, my reaction is gonna lose 483.6 kilojoules because I have two H2 going into that reaction. For every one mole of O2 consumed, I'm going to get minus 483.6 kilojoules. And for every two moles of H2O produced, I'm going to get the same thing. I'm going to get negative 483.6 kilojoules. So we can link this delta H to the coefficient. So it becomes a stoichiometric link. And we're going to, in, we're going to investigate that stoichiometric link in uh, a couple of videos when we start to deal with uh, when we start to deal with stoichiometry now another way to think of this is i know that when delta h is negative heat is given off heat is given off or released so my my system is giving it off to the surroundings so we can think of this as being a product of the reaction. So heat is, a, is basically a product of the reaction. So another way to write that thermochemical equation would be to say that 2H2 plus O2 gives 2H2O gas plus 483.6 kilojoules as a product. Now, we don't normally write it like this. We normally have the delta H next to it. But this may help you to see that 483.6 as being part of the stoichiometry. So for every two moles of H2O, I also will make 483.6 kilojoules for the calcium oxide case, uh, the calcium carbonate case, This is going to have a delta H that's equal to a positive. Now, I'm just going to um, write an approximate value of, let's say, 100 kilojoules here, positive 100. This is approximate. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm kind of making that up. So don't go to the textbook and comment on this video. Oh, Dr. K, the calcium carbonate decomposition reaction is a 150 kilojoules or 200 kilojoules. Uh, I'm just making something up for the sake of it because I don't have the actual number, but we're going to write it down anyway. So that's a big caveat right there. Okay, so in this case, let's just say, for example, that it's 100 kilojoules. Since this delta H is positive, 
we know that this is energy that's going from the surroundings to the system. And so if that's the case, if it's going from the surroundings to the system, in order for this reaction to go forward, it needs the energy as a reactant. So this energy become is, can be thought of as a reactant. So the way that we could write this is we could write calcium carbonate, and we should put phase labels, calcium carbonate solid plus 100 kilojoules of energy gives calcium oxide solid plus CO2. And I'm just going to show you the, the enthalpy diagram to kind of reinforce this idea. When we have the enthalpy diagram, we're going up in energy. So we start with the calcium oxide plus our 100 kilojoules. These two things are reactants, which then gives us our, uh, I'm sorry, this is calcium carbonate, which then gives us our calcium oxide plus our CO2 as a, as a product. So this all reinforces in with those enthalpy diagrams. And, and this will help you to see the stoichiometry. So now we know that for every one mole of calcium carbonate consumed, I'm going to get 100 kilojoules. I'm going to need 100 kilojoules of energy in that reaction. And the same thing with the calcium oxide and the same thing with the carbon dioxide. So in lecture problem two, we have two examples of writing a thermochemical equation. And there are just basically a couple of steps. So if you got something like this on the exam, you would know how to work it. Okay, so it says aqueous sodium, hyd sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce aqueous sodium chloride water and carbon dioxide gas. The reaction absorbs 12.7 kilojoules of heat at a constant pressure for each mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Write the thermo thermochemical equation for this reaction. Okay, so how do we start this? Well, the first thing, step one, is we have to write the balanced equation. So to do that, um, we have to go to our nomenclature. So this thing says sodium hydrogen carbonate. So I have to know what sodium hydrogen carbonate is. Reacts with hydrochloric acid uh, to produce aqueous sodium chloride. water and carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so that's step one. We wrote down our balanced equation and a lot of that is just nomenclature. Now the second part, step two, is we have to figure out delta H. All right, so th this second sentence here is the key. So it says the reaction absorbs 12.7 kilojoules of heat at a constant pressure. So that's, this tells us we're working with H, delta H. And absorbs, absorbs means that it's taking it in from the surroundings. So I know that my sign is going to be positive. And then it says 12.7 kilojoules of heat at a constant pressure. Okay, so there's a few things we can do. So we can put delta H here. And it, this would normally be to the right of the CO2, but I'm putting it down on the next line. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, so we put our delta H and we can put the sign that's positive uh, here already because I have the word absorbs. If the word was um, takes in, absorbs, um, anything that would denote energy coming from the surroundings into the system, that's automatically going to give you a positive. That's automatically going to give you a positive. Anything like release, um, puts off, something like those words would be um, a negative or exothermic. Now, here's the key. This thing says 12.7 kilojoules of energy equals one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so now the first thing we have to do is we have to check. Um, so with step one, we have to see, we have to write our equation and make sure it's balanced. So one thing I didn't do when I was writing my equation was check to make sure it's balanced, but I'm gonna check that right now. I have one Na, I have one Na, I have one hydrogen, plus one hydrogen, and I have two hydrogens on the right. I have uh, a carbon on the left and a carbon on the right, and I have three oxygens, and I have three oxygens. So we are balanced. Now that's important because we need to know what these coefficients are in order to write our thermochemical equation. So when I write delta H, I need to have that delta H relative to one mole of NaHCO3, one mole of HCl, one mole of NaCl, one mole of H2O, and one mole of CO2. That's important. Um, that's why we have to make sure. So we have to make sure that this ratio is correct based on the stoichiometry, and it is. So we can put plus 12.7 kilojoules there, and then we have our delta H. 
So for the second example, it says a propellant for rockets is obtained by mixing hydrazine, N2H4, and dinitrogen tetroxide, N2O4. These compounds react to give gas, gaseous nitrogen and water, water vapor, evolving 524 kilojoules of heat at a constant pressure when one mole of N2H4 uh, reacts. Write the thermochemical equation. So we have N2, so first step is to write the balanced chemical equation. N2H4 plus N2O4. And um, we would normally have to tell you that these are liquids. Um, I just, I know that off the top of my head. So in a problem on an exam, we would say is combined by mixing liquid hydrazine and liquid dinitrogen te tetroxide because we got to get those phase labels right. Um, but in this case, I'm telling you that. And then it says it gives gaseous nitrogen and water vapor. So we get uh, N2 gas plus H2O gas. Um, now, what we have to do is at this point, this is a good time to stop and make sure that we're balanced. So on the left side, we have N2H4, we have N2O4, and we have only one N2 on the right. So something's, something's not right. Now, you, what I recommend that you guys do at this point is you should go and balance this reaction on your own just to practice. If you need to uh, a refresher on how to balance reactions, go back to the video on balancing reactions from Chapter 2. That should help you um, with you know, your, your balancing reactions. I am going to give you the balance coefficients in this case, but you should make sure that you can balance this on your own because if you get this on the exam, you're going to have to balance it. So the correct balance is 2N2OH4 plus um, N2O4 plus, gives 3N2 plus 4H2O. So these are the balance coefficients. Okay, so now let's go on to the delta H part. So it says evolves and constant pressure. So I know that this is going to be a delta H. Evolving, giving off, means a negative sign. And it says, okay, for every one mole of N2H4, um, it gives 524.5 kilojoules. And so this is going to be a negative for that because uh, it's being evolved. So now the question is, is how do I make this work with the delta H? Well, up here I have a 2, and down here I only have a 1. So in order to put this into the balanced reaction, I need to double this energy. So this has to be multiplied by 2 because... In this balanced reaction, I'm, I'm worried about two moles of N2H4 is going to equal how many kilojoules. So I have to double that for this reaction because the, the stoichiometry tells me I need to have two in order for everything to work out with the rest of the reaction. So when I multiply that 524.5 by 2, I get uh, 1049 kilojoules. Uh, as, as the delta H. So this gives you a sense for how to write thermochemical equations. Um, in the next video, we're going to, now that we know how to write thermochemical equations, we're going to go on to um, work with applying stoichiometry to these.